So biology is a science. I mean, you're probably taking this course because you need a natural science. And so biology is one of those natural sciences. Well, what is science? You know, we all have this idea of what science is, the periodic table of elements, you know, microscopes, speakers, uh, and, and it's things that scientists do, you know, but what is that? So what science is, if you want like a fancy definition, it's first of all, it's a systematic study, meaning it's not all hand waving. You know, there's an order to do things. There's a, a way of doing things in order to make sure that you are doing accurate science. So we have this study and we're looking at the structure. So what things are made of and behavior, how do things uh, act? And it's not just animals, how do they act, but how do natural processes act? Of both the physical world, so think of physics, as well as chemistry, as well as the natural world, which is our biology and environmental biology. And we do this study through both observation and experiment. So in observation, we're looking at the world and making notes, more or less, and an experiment is when we're manipulating things. And there's benefits to each. So observation and experiment, one isn't better than the other. Now you have probably learned about the scientific method at some point in your life. Maybe it was in second grade at the science fair. Maybe it's a biology class you've already taken. And you may think, oh, I already know this. And I don't doubt that you do. But I'm going to go over kind of the scientific method again because it's incredibly important to understanding how science works and the science that I teach you in this class all came from the scientific method. So the very first step in science is actually really not science at all. It's just making observations, noticing the world around you, whether it's something outside, something inside, something under a microscope. It's just something you see. So imagine these are two plants in my apartment, same species, as the same type of plant uh, and I bought them at the same time and when I bought them they were the same size well looking at it you could probably guess um, or you could observe one is taller than the other something just as simple as that can start the scientific method so my observation is you know one of these plants is larger than the other now you need to turn your observation into a question and a question you can actually test. So for this example, my question is why is one plant taller than another? I can actually test that. But an example of a non-testable question is um, do boys or girls um, like mint chocolate chip ice cream more than strawberry ice cream? You can, get, you can kind of test that, but it's all opinion. Um, it's not really hard science or, you know, what is the best ice cream flavor? Well, what are you defining as best? Is it by taste? Well, how are you defining taste? So you need something that is very cut and dry, something that you could actually run an experiment. And that's what we're going to do. So why is one plant taller than the other? Now that we have a question that we want to experiment, we needed to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess. You've probably heard that before. And what we mean by that is I'm not just throwing out random things. Oh, maybe this one is taller because I sing to it every day. Like, no offense, very bad hypothesis. But you know plants. You know what plants need. So you could develop a guess based on the things you know about plants. So I've already told you that the same plant and at the time I bought them, they were both the same size. And so my question to you is why is there a difference? And you would probably think the same thing. So let's just try to think of what plants like. Uh, I apologize how crappy this is going to look. Um, so sun is one. Maybe I have one uh, in a window and one in my closet for some reason. Uh, maybe water. 
maybe I'm just like really neglecting my plant and like, oh, I really like this plant. I'll give it water. And I totally forget about the other plant sitting right next to it. Uh, think about, again, what other things do plants need? They need nutrients. So maybe I'm fertilizing one, but I'm not fertilizing the other or fertilizing one more than the other. Uh, maybe, you know, I use two different types of soil, so there might be different nutrients or different properties of that soil that makes one plant grow better than the other. And this list can go on and on, just whatever you can think of that could be making one plant grow, but the other not. And this is where science starts, is you observe something and now you're making guesses as to why that exists. So we've noticed a difference. We've come up with a couple of reasons why we think there's a difference. And now what we get to do is we choose one. We choose one of those to test. So the one I'm going to choose is sunlight. If plants receive sunlight, then they will grow taller. And you notice I have this if then statement there. You know, if my hypothesis, so if this guess, so plants receive sunlight, then Here's my question, which one will grow taller? So if they're receiving sunlight, they will grow taller. So this is the question that I'm going to test based on that hypothesis. Now that you have a very clear question and a very clear hypothesis, we can conduct an experiment. Now when conducting an experiment, it is crucial, crucial to have a control group. A control group is used to compare between groups. So if I were to conduct an experiment, let's actually go to a new slide. So my question again is that plants that are in sunlight grow taller. So I'm going to, here's the sun and here's a plant. Cool. Plants that grow in sun grow taller. Taller than what? Like, you can't just grow a plant in the sun and be like, ah, definitely taller. You Taller than other plants, taller than blah, 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 blah. So the control group is something that you are comparing. You need a comparison. Is it growing taller or would it have grown the same height if it was in the shade? So I'm going to put a kind of line down here. And I do suggest kind of drawing this in your notes and kind of annotating it. So I'll grow one in the sun, and I'm going to grow one in the shade. So here's the sun, and I'm just going to put an X through that. Uh, and here's the plant. So now, if the one in the sun is growing taller, then, or we now have something to compare it to. It is growing taller than plants grown in the shade, or plants grown inside. And so that's where these this control group, so again, this is the control group, is so crucial uh, because you need something to compare it to. But this is not a good experiment. Uh, it, it, it's a good start, but we're not quite there. I only have one plant, one plant in the sun, one plant in the shade. What if the plant in the sun was like an abnormally short plant? It just, just like people, some plants have genetics that make them short. Doesn't matter how many nutrients you give them, doesn't matter how much sunlight you give them, they're gonna be short. Same with people. Doesn't matter how short you are, like if you eat more carrots, you're unfortunately you are not growing any taller. Same thing with plants. So if only test one plant, it's not enough. You know, what if there's some weird abnormal genetics thing going on in that plant? So maybe I have these kind of weird plants and they are growing taller in the shade. So you want to run multiple trials. So um, I am not going to draw 10, but just imagine there's like 10 on each side. 10 is a good number. Uh, we call them trials. We also call them replicates. So trial or a replicate. Spelled just like replicate, but you pronounce it replicate. So you're running multiple plants, and this is incredibly in the, important because again, maybe random genetics will make some taller than the other. So you're running multiple trials or multiple plants or multiple replicates. You can kind of use uh, all of those interchangeably. 
now we have a really good experiment. Now I showed you in here that we've got this sun. Um, that's what we're changing. So sunlight, no sunlight. But what about water? What about nutrients? What about soil? All these things that we said in the previous slide that could be affecting plants. So what do we do with all those things? You know, we've got water. We still need to water our plants. Uh, we still need to put our plants in soil. We still need to give them fertilizer. NPK is um, the main ingredients of fertilizer. What do we do about those? And here's, here's a very crucial thing. These must stay the same between our two groups. If the plants in the sunlight get a cup of water, then the plants in the shade also need to get a cup of water. If the plants in the sunlight are given uh, two cups of fertilizer every month, then the plants in the shade need to be given a cup of fertilizer or two cups of fertilizer every month. You can't change things. Why? And this is very important, so make sure you're writing this down. Why do they need to be the same? Well, if they're not the same, that means if one plant grows taller than the other, it could be because of the sun or it could be whatever else you changed. It could be because you also gave them more water. It could be because you also gave them more fertilizer. And now we can't tell. We don't know which one of these factors is increasing plant growth. So in science, it's incredibly important to test one thing at a time. Now in our experiment, I talked about a lot of variables, a lot of things that could change. We didn't change everything, but we could change them. So water is a variable. In our experiment, we didn't change it, but we could have. Sunlight is a variable. And in our experiment, we did change it. So a variable is anything in your experiment that can be changed. Doesn't mean you did. It just means it could have been. There's three different types of variables. The first one is called the independent variable. This is the one the scientist is changing. This is what we are testing. So in our case, our independent variable was sunlight. We were changing sun. So some plants got sun, some plants didn't get sun. No, we weren't actually manipulating the sun. But that was the variable that we changed in our experiment. Some plants got one thing, some plants got another thing. So the independent variable is what we change. The dependent variable is what the scientist measures. So this is um, what we are looking for. So remember, think back to our hypothesis. If plants get sunlight, then plants will grow taller. And that's what we're measuring in our experiment. We're measuring the height of our, uh, um, in this case, the height of our plants. The dependent variable will depend on the independent variable. If these plants are grown in sunlight, then their height will depend on how much sun they get or how much sun they don't get. So the independent variable is what we are changing, the if part of our hypothesis, and the dependent variable is what we are measuring, or the then part of our hypothesis. But we have one more class of variables, because we've got two more pictures on here, our water and our fertilizer. Now, in our experiment, we didn't change these. We could have, but we didn't. We knew to do good science, you should only change one variable at a time. These last set of variables are considered constants. So the word constant means the same, and that's exactly what it means in a scientific sense. Constants are variables that we kept the same between our experiment. So the plants that got sun got a cup of water. The plants that didn't get sun also got a cup of water. So what you could see on a test is I could give you a scenario. I could give you an experiment. And I may ask you to identify what's the independent variable, what's the dependent variable, what are the constants. So be prepared uh, for a question like that. 